It's weird because I think for comedians, it takes, you know, they say it takes 10 years to find your voice in stand up. And I think that my material and my point of view is a reflection of who I am. And, you know, my silly kind of observational stuff is who I am. Like, me really angry is not very appealing. Do you know what this woman did to my bagel? And believe me, when I first started stand-up, I tried all different styles and ended up going back to what I initially started at. There's no calculation behind the style of stand-up that I do or that Aziz does. Comedians are just trying to be authentic to who they are, and it's an ongoing process as we grow and change as humans, those of us that are human. I'm not. Hi, I'm Jim Gaffigan. I'm a comedian and an actor. I have a television show, The Jim Gaffigan Show, which is on TV Land and re-airs on Comedy Central. Reddit, ask me anything. I kind of call that my inside voice, which is um, is me talking for the audience. I mean, I, I use a woman's voice. He wasn't even good. I wanted some of my clapping back. Oh, he's doing that voice already. Some of it is we all have an inner critic, and I'm giving that critic uh, a voice, but also um, the judgmental tone is is that critic, but also some of it is, in, it might be interpreting uh, some of the faces in the audience, because you're never going to please everyone uh, with your material. But it's also from a tactical thing, as a writer, you can establish a point of view, but the inside voice can have the opposing, opposing point of view. The learning curve that Jeannie and I went through uh, through the first season really made us bolder during the second season in the stories and how we told the stories. So I feel as though we've been, you know, this show was developed for a network it's a single camera uh, autobiographical comedy, but it's the stories are m much more personal and non-conventional is I guess how I would describe it. First of all, no one's eating a frozen Pop-Tart. Those people are weirdos. I think, I think I would probably say I mean, toasted is a little bit of a luxury. Sure, if you've got some time on your hands, if you're like a chef, you could toast a Pop-Tart. But I'm a man, and a man eats a, a Pop-Tart raw, all right? And you, first of all, you nibble the non-frosting portion first, like a man, and then, you slowly do different size bites. You know, you might do one bite, take a look at it, see what like your, your teeth uh, map looks like. But um, most importantly, I think there's two, so you can experiment. Obviously nibbling the non-frosting portion first and then going at it. But um, it's a great question. And I think uh, I have a lot of confidence that the internet is bringing about change in the world. But I don't know if birds have had that negative of an impact on me. I, the bird watching thing feels very foreign. I, uh, maybe because I have poor eyesight, but people are going out and watching birds through binoculars. They're like nature peeping toms, really. I'm very mindful of when people come to one of my shows 
that uh, that I want them leaving with the thought that not only they enjoyed the show, but that they're going to want to come back when I come back in like two years or whatever. And and part of that is, um, you know, stand-up comedy. There's this unspoken agreement that you're going to have new material. New meaning it is isn't in a special. But the complaint probably that I'm too sexy. Um, that it's visually distracting from the, the, the stand-up. Because um, often I'm just wearing boy shorts and uh, nothing else. Thank you everyone for your questions. I love you so much, deeply, in a creepy way.